it's Michael Bell, uh, Master of the Custodial Arts, and I designated myself as an amateur vacuum mechanic. So what we have here is the Shark Rocket, um, the new rocket that is cordless stick vacuum. It's a really good vacuum. I've been using it for about two, three months. Uh, I finally got it jammed up to the point of I've lost pretty much all suction. So I'm going to go through and show you how to clean this vacuum as well. This does not have the self-cleaning animal um, roller. And there goes some hair right there. Um, that video will be coming soon as soon as I get it in stock. However, I'm not going to make a cleaning video on any vacuum until I thoroughly tested the durability and versatility of this vacuum for a cordless vacuum, I believe, cannot be touched by any Dyson vacuum whatsoever. The actual plastic is so much tougher than anything that Dyson uses. Um, I've got a few more Dyson vacuums coming in, so we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll kind of go through some more uh, Dyson cleaning videos, but this Shark, I'm a big fan of the Shark brand. They use different plastics. They seem to run extremely well, and with this 45-minute runtime on this battery, it's just a highly recommended vacuum. But this isn't a review. This is a how to clean, so uh, we'll go ahead and get this uh, disassembled and uh, take the head apart, take the shaft, and then the rotating head apart. We'll get into this cleaning this. Okay, now that we have this actually uh, disassembled here, we're just going to kind of, and I've got something jammed up in here because it's actually scratched the plastic. There's something metal jammed up in this vacuum. So on this model here, I've actually never cleaned it, but there's three turn tabs here, and we're just going to unlock them like so. Looks like they go counterclockwise. And we're just gonna pull. Oh my, oh my god. Take a look at this. I have got something jammed. It's a. Oh my god. It's a paper clip. That is a bent up paper clip or something. That's a piece of metal. I don't know what that's from, but that, that would explain why it scratched it. And I am so far jammed up into this. Well, that cleared it there. set that plastic piece aside now and get all this basically hair. I don't know if this this roller actually comes apart or not. Okay so to we're gonna basically disassemble this to the extent of we're gonna pull this whole plastic cover off and the belt is over here on this side. If you have a snap belt on one of these vacuums I'll show you how to access the belt and then we'll get to the inside of the roller. Um, you're going to need a number 10, it looks like an e torx head, and we're going to go ahead and just remove these screws and then the whole plastic piece will come off here. Okay, so what you're going to need now, and now that we have this piece off, we're going to go ahead and set that in the sink. Uh, we'll soak that in water, and then you're going to want to remove all the T10 uh, screws that are in here, and you're going to need the, the E-Torx T10 that is called tamper. It's a tamper-proof uh, bit, and what it is is it's actually a bit with a small hole in it because these E-Torx have... A little nubbin inside of the screw that is called um, it's it's a tamper proof screw I do not know if you can see the little nub in there but a regular t10 that you have at your house probably will not work you're going to need a specialty tool um, Amazon link below to the set that I would buy and we're going to go ahead and remove these all these screws 
and I'll show you. You know, if this thing, if you have this thing and you have a broken belt, I'll go ahead and show you where the belt is as well. But there's one set of these screws that they designed for a specialty type tool to be used to remove the last screw out. So just take your time removing these screws. You're not in a rush. Ugh. See how that screwdriver barely fits in that hole? They kind of did that on purpose, I would guess, so people wouldn't mess with it. We're just going to remove all these screws. And some of, the, some of these screws might get a little damage removing them. Let's see, I'm not sure if I have lights on this. There we go. I don't know if that's any better or not. Still not 100% moved into this house. So I've actually got a little more problems than most people here. We got hit by a tornado a couple weeks ago and I got real lucky the, the tornado actually ripped the back end of my uh, the gable off of my house and it actually wasn't the tornado that did it it was the the telephone line the actual pole snapped in the back of my house and the guy attached my internet cable to my, to my gable and it broke the gable and the uh, about a third of it broke off the back end of my house, so try not to lose these screws. And I think we're down to the one that we're going to have to kind of have problems with, and the one that you're going to have problems with is this inside one here, because essentially the tool, the tool that I'm using, the nut driver with the T10 attachment, won't fit. So we're actually going to take that razor knife very carefully. I don't recommend doing this if you have small kids or you're not real good with knives or, or anything like that. And we're just going to kind of, we're going to round this hole out a little bit. This is just plastic. And as you can see, see the little pieces of plastic that I'm, I'm cutting out here? This is, this is to fit the tool that I have in there. Otherwise, you need to buy the proper tool. So... All you YouTube, all the YouTubers that are perfectionists, go buy the correct tool. This vacuum ain't in warranty anyway. We're almost able to get to it. After you do this, you won't have to do it again. opened it up just a little bit. Now we're going to get this last screw out. There we go. 
we're going to take the flathead screwdriver and a lot of this stuff this this is the belt side here it just snaps together as you can see the whole front end here is going to pull apart be careful this because this is the cover for the LED light there they are there there's internal screws here one here just the one on this side and we'll kind of pop this is the this is the roller cover and we just kind of pop that out now you can get to your belt here which we'll have to remove this housing if you needed to replace the belt okay we have one center screw that I missed right in the middle because it was covered in dirt and this is right in the middle of it we'll pull that out now this whole top cover ought to come off without breaking anything oh boy now we got to the circuit board okay so now we want to clean our top screen part so We have three screws we need to remove here. Now that this covers all off, we have three more screws. on the top side here holding this plastic piece in it looks like might be four Actually, there's two more here. Man, this is, I overthought this by a lot. Those are, wow, I can't believe they use those. Got your black wire, and we got our white wire. And we're going to disconnect those. This is going to be from our rotating head assembly. Just finding all these screws is the main deal here. Then we've still got this wheel here which I've never taken this apart so that ought to just pop right off there there we go okay this is going to separate after you very gently pull on this will separate the entire head and brush assembly your LED light cable will be this black cable here and we're going to just disconnect that as well. Now our whole assembly of this vacuum cleaner is separated. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go on this side. There's two T10s. And this should be 
pay attention to how this cable is ran for the front LED lights and this should disconnect the brush roller I think it may not Just going to kind of pry it up like that. It appears that I missed one screw here. I sure did. This should take the whole, there we go. This is going to take the plastic assembly out. And what you want to do is very gently, because we still have, this is your LED light strip still connected inside the grooves of the vacuum cleaner. And we're just going to separate the assembly here. And what we have here is this would be your water type seal. So we're going to separate the brush there. I'm actually going to leave that seal like that and then now we can proceed to actually clean the entire unit. One little tip here if you actually disassemble this, go get some uh, magnetic cups. See these screws, they'll go right into the magnetic cup. Actually, I think the cheapest place that you can go if your big city has one is a Harbor Freight. This way you won't lose any of these screws. As you can see, just to disassemble this is something. So there we go, we've got all that. We're just going to set these tools aside and set this, these screws aside so we don't lose them. Okay, and as per my uh, Shark Max Flex um, cleaning video, I actually am using just glass cleaner foaming glass cleaner and what it does is it, it soaks into the dirt and then I come back after I let it set and just kind of keep this electrical cable out of here. We're not going to reassemble this vacuum until 24 hours so everything dries. If you want to remove this seal, you can. I will just to show you that you can reinstall it. Sometimes they don't reinstall real well after you remove them. And get into the little crevices here and go to the front. Actually, that removes. And after you've soaked this down, I'm just going to wipe it. Wipe these parts down. If we need to, I've got a brush, and we'll go in and brush. A lot of you Karens that are home feel sorry for you. Actually, we'll just remove this LED. Look at the difference that makes. Just set the the cover aside. Actually, we'll put this piece back into kind of where it was, so we don't lose it. Then our front piece here, we don't really need to spray it. We'll just set it aside as well. It's 
its foaming glass cleaner can be purchased from the links below as well. This is a very good vacuum. Uh, the initial run time of 45 minutes is just amazing. Um, I can do actually two small buildings with this vacuum and just throw this vacuum in my car and go. Now we're going to get to the brush roller here. This foaming glass cleaner, just kind of get it wet, turn it. We're trying to keep the moisture away from the actual engine of the roller. And if you're afraid to do this work, don't be afraid to do this work because I can tell you this much, this vacuum cleaner was not made by engineers in America. This vacuum cleaner was assembled by little kids probably in China. So if little kids in China can put this together, you can clean this vacuum. It's like building guns. If kids in Pakistan that are eight years old can build guns, then you can sit at your house legally and build your own AR-15 85% rifle or you can buy a gun kit of an AK-47 and get a shot press and bend your own receiver flats and build your own guns at your house. It's 100% legal if you're allowed to legally own a firearm. So yeah we've got that pretty cleaned up and like I said we're going to wait a while uh, 24 hours and then we're going to reassemble this but we'll just kind of um, go to me reassembling this. Okay, so it's been 24 hours, everything's dried out, and now we're going to reassemble our vacuum cleaner. We're going to put our head back in to the roller, the brush unit, maybe. These little tabs on the end of the plastic can be tricky, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush head into the shaft and then press it in like so. So we're all sitting here. Then we're going to go ahead and put our screws back in. And we're going to put one screw in the end here. And that's going to be just to hold the roller into the unit itself. And we're going to go on this other side and we're going to press this original plastic cap back in. And then go ahead and put our two screws in here so we don't forget. Start one side and then go to the other side. And then go back to the first side and start tightening it back down. And then come back to the other side and make sure it's tight. Okay. Now we're going to...
going to come on this side and we're going to put our other screws back in for the plastic. So we have got one, two, three, maybe. And four. And so we don't have to come back and do this. We're just going to give every screw just a little bit more of a twist. Okay, now we're just going to rotate the head, make sure that the belt is moving properly, which it is. Okay. Now that we have got this together, we're going to re-put our plastic seal in here. And you're just going to run it. As you're running this it'll it'll kind of feel like it's going into a groove and just kind of press it in there on motorcycles this is usually done when you seal an air box up so you don't get any air leaks or so water doesn't get into it. It'll, it'll repel water. And then after you've got it just about in the grooves, just kind of take your finger and go along the grooves. So we're kind of pressing it in. It shouldn't move. It might move a little bit. But once we get that other piece on here, it'll be just fine. Next we have our LEDs that we're going to set back in there. And these are just going to kind of snap in. Basically take your LED strip, push it up into the little grooves and then down and see our little, our little rubber strip come out, but that's alright. Then we're going to just wire our LED wire back behind where the mounting points were onto the head of the unit like so So we'll figure that out when I put the board back on here. And what I did was really didn't clean this part because of the, the circuit board. But if you want, you can go in and clean the little wheels. But what we're going to do with everything in place is we're going to kind of set the unit back in and we're going to put that side in first and then the unit is going to basically kind of drop down into the housing and 
you'll want to keep the, the rotating brush head motor wires out and the LED wire is where it needs to be on the side here and then we're going to kind of not forcibly but we're just going to kind of press the unit down you heard it snap so now it's snapped back into place and what we're going to do we're going to put a couple of the the torx heads back into it so it holds it into place put one here and put one on this other side okay then we're going to reconnect our LED light back onto the circuit board it's like hooking up stuff to a computer you'll hear it snap when it snaps in and then with our motor here we're going to run our lines back through the top head here and there's little groups for both these lines to fit into the housing and then we're going to plug our lines back into the circuit board and we're going to press these very slightly onto the board do not force these you want the you want it to go all the way down to the circuit board it may snap it may not but don't push so hard that the the forks will end up moving back and forth so we've got that there and then we're going to reassemble with all the screws back into the head of the unit oops what it is and what it is is you have to press this piece here the plastic guard piece and hold it up because your screws are going to go in this top side once you put this center one in the left and the right one should not have a problem And then just go back and retighten the three. That one there. Because it goes in the other way. Now that we've got the top side, I, I just don't want to have to do this again. So I got all the screws in there and just turn your brush, make sure your brush is rotating properly before we go to reassemble all this. Then we're going to basically put our head back on to the unit it'll snap in place then we're going to put our side wheel piece back in Oh, we forgot a screw on the inside here. Then we're going to put this piece back on, and it just kind of snaps on there. We might have to take the... There we go. And 
that just snaps. Then we're going to put our last piece over our LED cover and it will snap in there as well. Ugh. Maybe, there it goes. Okay, now we're going to put all our screws back in and hopefully not have any extra screws. I mean, that's the goal here. I would start with reassembling these screws one side at a time so you don't miss anything. Actually, that one there takes a shorter screw than the one I put back in. So there are a few smaller screws and these ones by the back wheels will have the smaller screws. Maybe separate those when you take it apart. One of the shorter screws will also go into here. Little trick on this last one put your bit in there and then barely put your bit up above so you can still twist it, but you're not putting the tool all the way onto the bit. going to remove this longer one so your short screws will be by the wheels. Then we're going to put this shorter one here. Voila! Then we're going to put our actual brush piece back on. Oh, maybe. There we go. And then we're going to lock it back in place. Bam! Cleaned up, totally disassembled. If you have a belt problem or anything like that, now you can access the belt. And we'll go to the actual uh, motor unit next. Okay, and now to the uh, main body of it with the actual filter and everything inside. We'll get this all cleaned up. And before you reassemble everything, wait 24 hours after we spray it down so we don't have any problems. Okay, this is real basic here. Um, what you want to do is you've got a, the release for the actual cartridge here on the side of the vacuum and we're just going to press it and it's going to disconnect the main body. Now there actually is an internal filter on this, but the odds are with the primary and secondary filter that this will not need cleaned. Um, this is pretty much clean, so I'm not even going to mess with cleaning this but it's on the inside here. This basically is used for uh, to quiet the, the vacuum down as well. Wow, would actually be my uh, secondary filter. 
and we'll go ahead and spray it down. It's got a little dirt on it, but it's not bad. I've been using this vacuum for about a month and a half, so we've got a little bit of debris here, and we'll just wipe this down and then make sure we don't have any blockages in our four ports. And then we'll go ahead and clean the canister with a brush and a foaming glass cleaner. So we're just gonna hand kind of squeeze, get this wet, squeeze all the dirt out. And then, remember we're gonna let this set for 24 hours. These shark vacuums are very efficient. Um, I'm just a big believer in them. Uh, I'm very hard on stuff. Hell, on my Toyota car the other day, I went to get in and I actually um, broke the door handle off my car. That cost another $300 if that does Toyota. But just want to soak the filter and then just squeeze it out. You can see the dirt run out of it. And you can get these replacement filters. I'll put some links below. They're fairly reasonable on Amazon. If you do make any purchases on Amazon, that stuff really helps me out through the links in the description. But, so we got this filter all squeezed out. Just squeeze it and squeeze it. Try to get all the water out of it. And we'll just set it up here on the kitchen sink and let it dry all day. Now if you do have any blockages in here, which is probably not going to happen, but if you do have any blockages in here, um, I'm just going to show you, basically you have your T10s in here as well, and I think there's, it just looks like there's four of them, so we'll remove this, however there's probably a rubber seal in here that is going to seal it up. And if you're at home, because of the, uh, well, I can't say that word on YouTube, because of the uh, crisis, you know, doing this, yeah, just take you a little while, and next day, just kind of put this vacuum back together. And this will separate the induction system. Okay, there actually isn't a seal, which I'm kind of surprised. So, okay, so let me explain this to you. So, in a car, um, a cheap way to increase horsepower is you actually put, you could put what's called a throttle body spacer, or an actual internal unit into your car. So, what, what, what that usually is, is it's a metal piece that you stick in, or the throttle body spacer has cuts into the throttle body to force the air into the engine. So what they've done with this is they've actually made cuts. So this is almost like a uh, a blade. Just consider this like a turbo prop blade, and you can actually see. See, this is how they get the velocity out of the the vacuum. So the air comes in there, and then it spins, which creates more atom atomization of the air with the cuts because these are like blades and it actually create more flow and more forceful of a flow. Dyson has a patent on their, their thing. Once I get some more Dyson vacuums, I'll, I'll show it to you, but we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, this is actually pretty dirty, but this probably, this process here probably isn't gonna take, you know, one month, a month and a half of meat cleaning is probably equivalent to a year or two of home household cleaning. And again, we're just going to spray this down. Same thing with this. We're going to spray this internally. We're going to hit this one pretty heavy. And then we'll go to the inside here. Same thing. I'm actually going to let the canister set. Scrub this top part down.
going to run it under the sink. then set it aside as well. Let it dry out. We'll go back to the canister. This one's going to be really dirty. This is going to be your dirtiest part of the vacuum. I'm just going to kind of get in here as well as much as possible. With the, with the foaming cleaner, let the foam, the foam is going to do a lot of the job here. But we just want it to penetrate and loosen the dirt up, get to what we can with the brush, and then let the water do the work in the sink. Once you go over the middle screen part, just lightly do it. You don't want to poke a hole in the screen. Ugh. We're going to respray it. set for a couple minutes until it runs all the foam out of it and then we'll run it underneath the sink. Okay now that we've let the, uh, the glass cleaner do its job we're going to use hot water and we're just going to go into the sink and get all this cleaned out. The reason I'm using foaming glass cleaner is so the little bubbles in the foam penetrate all this dirt that's built up. We're just going to set it aside, let it drip dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to get to the little crevices. Okay, now that we've let this drip dry, we're going to do the same thing that I did in my uh, the Max Flex video. We're going to take a basically, well, it's butter. I think it's called a butter knife, and we're just going to wrap this blade up on this flat side here, and then to get up into the canister, we're going to force it up. And just use a little bit of force here. And this will get all the edges on the internal side of the unit. And don't force it because this is plastic. Then we'll go into the inside canister, scrub it down, and go through this other port with the knife and clean it out. And 
this will help your drying process a little bit as well. It won't take as long. I th think we're going to have to pull the main body out here because there's a little bit of moisture inside of uh, the container. Okay, so I uh, didn't realize that we were going to get moisture into this uh, container, so we're basically going to pull this purple piece and separate it from the housing of the unit and let this dry out. It actually got moisture here, um, and there's a little bit of dirt here that we're going to wipe up. And that is an actual seal. So, remove the seal let the seal dry and then we'll reinstall the seal that actually is like a water type seal for the container so we're going to let all this stuff dry out and then reassemble it so there you go Okay, now that everything is uh, officially dry uh, for 24 hours, we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. And we're going to go ahead and take our gasket that we had and put it back in. And actually, we'll go this way. So your beveled edges will go toward the clearance area here. And then we're going to reinstall our stack here. Oops, wrong. Nope, that's the right way. And this stack is basically going to snap in. We're just going to press it in like so. You heard it kind of snap. And then we're going to put our tunnel piece back in. And now we're going to insert our four screws. And then tighten our screws down, back down. And then once we get these four tightened down, we'll just go back and kind of make sure that they, they're all tight. Okay, because you can actually feel it kind of move, so that one's tight. Go back to the first one, little turn. The second one, little turn. Third one, little turn. And last but finally, the fourth one, little turn. You got your primary filter, and you can kind of see the indentations of where it was used before, so we're just going to reinstall back in because you can see the four circles. So we're going to install the primary filter back, and then our secondary filter installed, and then we've got our whole unit here. We're just going to snap it back in. And we're pretty much done. A lot more suction. Now if we get lucky after I took this whole head assembly apart, hopefully the, li the lights and everything will work after I unplugged it from the circuit board. Let's see. Let's find out if it works. See, 
if that light turns on. Hey! but I don't care because I just spent over two hours making this video so hopefully this video helped you out and don't forget to check out the next uh, vacuum cleaner video which I think will be a Dyson V7 which is essentially a little bit stronger than the Dyson V6 but I think I'm going to put a HEPA filter in it but I need to run it for about a month and a half so I can uh, basically get it dirty get it clogged up see what I can do to get it really beat up but if you're actually looking for one of these uh, cordless vacuums personally don't spend the money on the dice and get the shark. You, you, you know, this thing is battle tested by, by me and the versatility and durability of this vacuum far exceeds anything on the market today that I've seen just from the, the build quality. So stay tuned and thanks for subscribing and liking.